All right, so now that we have practiced, now we're going to do our still life painting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put everything that we've been doing the past few weeks into play. So we practice some forms and we should know how to base that on other things. Like for instance, we've looked at Paul Cezanne's paintings. We've seen fruit in his paintings. If we can do a sphere, we can probably do an apple or an orange. So what we need is we need to start in the background and work our way forward. So when you look at Paul Cezanne's paintings, you notice he's got things sitting on a table. So what I'm gonna do is establish where the table would be. So I'm gonna paint kind of like a horizon line in a landscape. I'm gonna do a line pretty close to the middle, maybe even above to give me plenty of table space. But then I wanna do a wash of this color. So I'm going to be creating, like I don't want the brown to look dark and light yet. I want everything to look pretty much the same value. And if I had to say what color of brown this is, I would call it a tint. That's something that we learned a couple of weeks ago. A tint is when a color has white added to it or when it looks lighter. So this isn't dark brown. I'm not adding black to it. I'm not technically adding white to it, but what I am doing is I'm creating a wash of the color by adding water to the paint. And since I'm adding water to the paint, that's thinning it out and making it lighter and more transparent. So that gives me my table. Then I need to pick a color for my wall in the background. When I do that, um, I'm not going to, like if I'm gonna paint red fruit on here later, I'm not gonna paint a red wall. So I'm gonna pick a color that I'm probably not gonna use a lot of when I put objects on the actual table. So I'm gonna get some blue here and I'm gonna go ahead and paint that. And again, this is gonna be a tint of blue and a color wash version of the blue because I want everything to be sort of transparent still. I need to keep things light because I'm going to be painting things that will overlap on top of these colors. Therefore, they need to be light enough for me to be able to do that. Now something, oops, something that I've noticed in real life is when I look at things, and you can actually check this by looking around you while you're watching this video, um, as I look at things in real life, things that are further usually sort of tend to get darker or even blurry um, because I'm not close to that light that I'm seeing it with. So what I'm going to do is try to put that effect in my painting. So I'm actually going to go back in and I'm going to get a little bit more brown. And when I put more brown on there, that immediately makes it darker. But you can see an edge where the dark brown stops and the light brown that I had before starts. So I need to get rid of that. So I'm going to clean out my brush squeeze out the extra water, and then I'm gonna blend it by pulling the dark brown in to the light brown, fading it away. All right, and I wanna do the same thing with the wall. So if I was doing a landscape, this would really help the effect of the depth, looking like the ground goes further away and the sky goes further away from us. But in this case, it's the table and the wall. So just by doing this, so I put the blue on there, I'm tapping out my brush, y'all can hear me doing that, squeezing out the extra water. Then while it's still wet, I'm gonna pull the darker blue into the lighter blue, fading it away and blending it like we've been talking about. So already I have the effect that there's depth. There's the front part of my table, the middle, and then the back. We know that's called foreground, middle ground, background. So in the next painting, we'll start, or the next video rather, we'll start putting stuff in the table or on the table.